Hi everybody, Dan Ullman, Mike Beer. The DRF Bets race of the day for Friday, June the 7th is race number nine at beautiful Belmont Park. It's the grade two New York stakes for fillies and mares going a mile and a quarter on the inner turf. And it's the first half of the $100,000 guaranteed New York stakes Metropolitan Handicap two-day daily double. <laughs> and remember, when you bet the race of the day on DRF Bets, you get your money back offer. Bet $7 on any one horse in any race of the day this month, and if your selection finishes second or third, you get your money back. Learn more at promos.drf.com. Let's meet the field for the New York. You can access free formulator pass performances on the race of the day event page at drf.com. Download them, handicap along with us. We'll take the field in post position order, beginning with a pretty nice mare. That's the number one, Holy Helena. And remember, she won the Woodbine Oaks and the Queen's Plake over Synthetic as a three year old filly, yep. and she's still kicking. She won the grade three, the very one last time out at Gulfstream Park. Now, she got a great trip and ride, and she was all out to catch the razor sharp icky macho that day i think she can get another good trip sitting behind Me the too. pace i don't know last year when she was fifth in this race i thought she was trending kind of downward I did too. i'm not sure where she is from a form cycle facing some sharp chad runners yeah i mean i you know the some of the horses she's running against i guess could be a problem for her um i I liked her effort last time. It was a rated pace, Tried and hard. she was close to it. But I liked that she was able to kick that horse down at the end. I thought that was a good performance. Um, other overall, though, I sort of I feel like you and I maybe agree about her because after she won the Sheep's Head Bay last year, I felt like boy, she could have a pretty big year on turf. But after that race, she just didn't seem to be quite up to the same level, and so I'm concerned that maybe she's just not quite good enough to win this race. But I thought she ran well last time. Number two is Maddie's Magnum. This horse uh, really went on a roll in a couple of off the turf races. Uh, David Donk understandably tried the ladies' handicap. Uh, yeah. She. Probably found that race a little bit too turf. They so. uh, tough, too tough. They got her back to the turf last time out in the Bogey, and I really didn't see much of an excuse. She just prompted the pace. It was a very slow and rated pace on yeah. the outside, and she wasn't good enough for the Chad duo of Homer Reek and competition of ideas. But I guess she could be close to the pace again. Yeah, she could get another good trip in this race. But the question is, what's going to be different this time? Even if she is, because. She got a great trip last time, and she's just no match for horses like this. Timeform US believes the giant zinger, the number three, will be able to make the lead in this year's edition of the New York Stakes. She was the pace setter last time out in the Sheep Said Bay. Maybe she didn't care for the soft turf course because she was no match for the top two. I mean, Santa Monica just kind of blew right. that field's doors off at about the 5 16th pole. Giant Zinger held on well for third. She's lightly raced as a four year old, and I guess if she can make an easy lead, she can hang on for a piece at least. Yeah, and she was close to Santa Monica one start prior to that, too, in the Orchid, where she also got to the lead in there and was beaten less than a length. Um, I don't know. I, I don't. I can't knock her form. Obviously, she sends, she tends to show up and run every time. She's very rarely is she well beaten in any of her races. Um, I've never really thought of her as this kind of a horse, but I don't know. Maybe the pace will, will take her a long way. I I had a tough time buying into this horse. I think the four lady Montour can be close to the pace. She was a gate to wire winner in the Grade Two Glens Falls, and then when she came back to the winner's circle, the police were waiting. They arrested her for theft because she just <laughs> went 54 and two, 121 and one, and walk. for one, for no, I have no idea why. None of the other jockeys are really interested in going after her that day, even after her very nice North American debut. After that race in the Flower Bowl, they tried to raid her. She ran okay. She made the lead in the Long Island. She didn't run very well. She looked like a mare that was crying out for a layoff. She got it. Yeah. She came back last time out in the Sheepshead Bay, and I think the soft ground really worked against her and a lot of other horses in that race. Yeah, soft ground and layoff in that race. I, I don't know. I, I'm going to give her a pass for that much. She didn't run... You know, it wasn't horrible in there, but I feel like that's a race you could, you know, maybe go a little easier on her for. You know, I didn't think she ran horribly in the Long Island last year. I, it wasn't her best race. It was just one of those situations where they tried to, for some reason, they tried to track it again. Some long shot went past her early in the race, so she tried to sit. And then Tricky Escape made this real early move on the back. So she had to go early, too. I just feel like maybe she had an excuse for that race. Um, I'd like to see Kendrick 
try to make the lead in this race. I know Giants yeah. is probably going. I'd like to see Kendrick just center and try to go. And the he front is there. a very aggressive rider, yeah. and he can make the lead because this uh, filly does have some speed. Vexatious comes in from Southern California. She did run in the Sheepshead Bay last time out, and another one that might have been a victim yeah. of the soft ground. She is now under the tutelage of Jack Sisterson, who won a graded stakes race at Arlington last week. I think Vexatious has run some decent races in the past in some pretty tough spots, but this is the kind of race where I just think everything needs to fall together. Yeah, me too. It does. Yeah, I agree with that. I feel like she's going to need everything to go her way because I actually think she's pretty talented. Um, I don't care about her last race. I feel like she was maybe more than anybody else. Yeah. She hated that ground. If it's firmer for her on Saturday, I think that could lead to a turnaround. But I also feel like She's at her very best when they just take her back and make one run with her. And I don't know how that well that's going to play in this race. Competition of ideas is one of two Chad Brown trained runners. She won the grade one American Oaks in her final start as a three-year-old. She came back in the bogey. I thought Joel Rosario gave her a very fine Hate trip, it. sitting in the pocket behind that slow pace. For a brief instant, it looked like Joel wanted to get outside the pace set or an upper stretch, but he decided that's not going to work out. He shot on through down towards the rail and was just no match for stablemate Homer Rieger. All in all, a good starting off yeah. point for the four-year-old campaign, and she has better tactical speed than her favored uh, uh, stablemate. Yeah, it's, all that stuff is true. You know, it was nice to see her, you know, even though she couldn't hold off Homerie last time, she took a step forward on figures anyway. Um, she has the grade one win at a mile and a quarter, and now she stretches back out. I still personally think that mile and a quarter race, the American Oaks, is a little tough to evaluate. She looked really good visually. It was a very impressive win, but it was such a bad field. And it just felt like nobody else ran in that race. I personally feel like she still has something to prove, but she ran okay off the layoff last time. I wouldn't sleep completely on the seven, Semper Centennier. I know that she's eligible for a non-winners of two life race, but she's proven that she belongs in these graded stakes events. I thought she ran really well in the La Prevoyante race where she was sort of forced to go all in with three furlongs yeah. to go, and I think that sapped her stretch kick. The very one-two starts back. I was a little bit disappointed with that effort. She ran okay. And last time out in the Sheepshead Bay, uh, it looked like she was sitting a decent spot as the field uh, entered the far turn, but then Santa Monica made a very shrewd move on the far outside right. to blow the race open. It shuffled Semper Sentier back a little bit, yep. and then the stretch, Dylan Davis was kind of picking his way along. It was like he didn't really want to get all out because, again, that turf was really, really soft. Yeah, I agree with all that. You know, she's settled for second or third in each of her last five she's turf really races. Well. She's run well in all of those races, and she does have the kind of tactical speed that could lead to a really good trip in this race. Um, it's not going to be easy for her to win when we get to the when we start talking about the next horse in the race, but I'm using this horse. Well, let's talk about our top selection in this race. On the outside, it is Homerik. This horse was third in a major Group One race as a three-year-old filly last year. She came off of a long layoff in the Bogey. As usual with many European horses, she didn't break very well. She was last off of an extremely slow pace, but once Irad uh, eased her out into the clear, she just stormed down the center of the course to win. And if she duplicates that performance, and she should get, I think, a little more pace to work at, yeah, I think work so, with too. this time around, uh, boy, if she runs that race, she's going to be real tough. Yeah, and it does feel like even that race, you know, it was off the layoff. The distance might have been a little bit short for her. Um, there was no pace at all for her and she still won the way that she did, it, it makes me feel like she just might be too good for these horses because she was awful good as a three-year-old and now she gets more distance and maybe more pace. It's pretty tough for me to go against her in here. 8471 for Mike, 8617 for me in the grade two New York Stakes. Again, it's the first half of the $100,000 guaranteed New York Stakes Metropolitan Mile Daily Double. And of course, it is your DRF Bets Race of the Day, which means you have your money back promo. Also, you have your 10% exact a winner's bonus. You bet any race during this Belmont Stakes uh, Racing Festival Thursday through Saturday, you get a 10% exact a winner's bonus as a mobile DRF Bets user. Learn more at bets.drf.com and approximate post time for the New York, your Race of the Day for Friday, 515 Eastern. Good luck.